Hi, my name is Sven and I will talk about mesh field processing in complex earth structure and how we may incorporate in complex earth structure into mesh field processing. Mesh field processing is about locating sources. And in ambient seismic noise, we usually have the problem that our sources are not impulsive and techniques that are well established in earthquake seismology, like picking travel time of different phases and inverting those, um, are simply not applicable to what we do. So instead, other approaches exist, and the most well-known approach is plane wave beamforming. And plane wave beamforming exploits the coherency of the wave field across an array of stations. And the easiest way to understand it is that for a given plane wave, what are the time shifts that we expect across the array? Uh, we correct the seismograms for those uh, time shifts. We sum all the seismograms forming the beam, and then we evaluate how good this beam is somehow. The main limitation of plane wave beamforming is that our sources have to be far away. And there are uh, resolution problems of arrays and so on. Right? To circumvent that, uh, especially the part about sources being far away, we have matched field processing. And matched field processing is exactly the same thing as beamforming. Uh, in some communities, these are synonymous. Um, with the only difference being that in plane wave beamforming, we have plane waves, and in mesh field processing, we have curved wavefronts. This means that we no longer test for back azimuth and velocity, but instead for the actual location of, uh, of our potential source and velocity. And a different way of thinking about beamforming uh, is that we actually compute synthetic wave fields, and we match or we compare wave fields our synthetic wave fields with the recorded wave fields. This is why match field processing is called match field processing. We're matching wave fields. And how this is actually done in practice is that we use simple analytical green functions for acoustic propagation where there's nothing else happening in the medium except for simply propagating of the wave field, which can be represented like this. And then uh, the connection to the, to the delay and sum idea is simply that this expression also is the same thing as a phase shift or time shift if we take this and we convolve it with our waveforms. And this is exactly what is done in beamforming and in match field processing. Now the idea we asked ourselves or the question we asked ourselves is what happens if we take a different representation of our synthetic wave field? If we don't take this expression, but instead use a, as realistic as possible a representation of wave propagation in Earth. And the way we how we approached that was uh, that we used Green's functions that were computed numerically for realistic Earth structure. Uh, and we end up calling this numerical match field processing. And this has a number of uh, consequences. For example, that we no longer test for velocities because we choose a velocity model and then velocities, for example, different velocities for different frequencies due to dispersion of surface waves are already incorporated in our Green function. We don't need to think about these all of these effects implicitly or explicitly. They are implicitly incorporated. So we reduce the problem uh, the dimensionally of the dimensionality of the entire problem. We reduce it by one dimension. We no longer test for velocities. And at the same time, we incorporate real uh, elastic wave propagation effects. We show a quick example here of what this looks like on real data for the secondary microseism. When the center we have our approach, numerical match field processing. On the right we have significant wave heights for the same time time uh, time snapshots, and we find a good agreement between what we identify as seismic source locations and where we have storm activity uh, above the oceans. If we compare that against the standard match field processing, we find somewhat a good agreement between them. But of course, we do need to test for velocity. But for example, in this case specifically, we also find that. If we had chosen a different velocity, we find completely different results uh, in terms of what source, what regions appear to be active, uh, which may lead to misinterpretations of, of, what, uh, of what we actually see. If you want to know more about uh, our approach, we have a preprint available uh, on Earth Archive under this DOI. And we also do provide tutorial code on GitHub to make the uh, jump into match field processing a bit easier and uh, uh, approachable. Thank you.